nice to meet you. I'm Amelia. Thanks nice for to agreeing. meet you, Amelia. Uh, thanks for agreeing to do this interview uh, for me. Okay, no problem. Uh, it looks like Francis Ford Coppola 1986 film uh, Peggy Sue got married, um, where you played Michael Fitz Fitzsimmons was your first mm -hmm. um, film role. How did you get your, uh, how did you audition for that movie and what was the audition process like? That, that was interesting because I, that's a good question, because I had just finished drama school at Goodman, Goodman DePaul Theater School. I went four years to there, to that school, and a casting woman from Francis Coppola's uh, company who was casting the film saw a little um, a monologue that I wrote myself that an agent in Chicago had had me put on tape and they sent it to Coppola's casting person. Then Coppola wanted me to fly out and meet him and read a scene from Peggy Sue Got Married. It all happened very fast. So I flew out the next day. I even think I flew out that night, if you can believe it, that night, Amelia. And I was very nervous. I don't think I'd ever been on a plane before, or maybe when I was little, but I hadn't been on a plane in a long time. And I went to Universal Studios on the 4th of July. It's seven in the morning. They drove me into Universal Studios. I'd never been on a studio. All this happened within like 30 hours. And I had to meet Francis Coppola, who I loved, who directed The Godfather and Apocalypse Now. So I was very nervous. I didn't understand what the movie was about, that I didn't know she went back in time or anything. But they just gave me my couple of my scenes. And I read with, usually when you read in an audition, you read with somebody they have that the casting director or some actor they bring it i read with francis coppola the director and he said good good do it again do it again and i do it again and um i went back home to chicago and then it's been a long time but a couple weeks had passed and i got the role everybody was shocked wow. me too that's amazing um, but I'll tell you a great story. Amelia, let me tell you this story. After I auditioned for him, I was so nervous that I went outside. This is a true story. I went outside of the office. I wanted to get away from him because I was so nervous. So I wanted to get home and they were going to have a car pick me up, but it wasn't there yet. So I sat on the curb and I was waiting to get a cab so I could go back to the hotel, right? But I didn't know was, I wasn't in the real world. I was sitting on a curb in Universal Studio and it was all fake. And I was waiting for a cab to come and it was all a set. <laughs> so someone came out and said, what are you doing? I said, I'm waiting for a cab. There's no cabs, this isn't a real street. And then finally the guy came that drove me there and drove me back, that's true. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, second question. Um, uh, do you have a process for getting into character? Um, so I sort of do. Um, obviously, I read the script first, read my lines, and um, And then after I go through the lines, I usually do it the same way, sometimes a little different. But I get an idea of maybe how, how he talks or how he moves. And then I start thinking about what he'll look like physically. Is he, what kind of clothes is he sloppy? Is he neat? Is he, is he um, wealthy? Is he poor? Does he walk a little? odd does he do i do all those physical things first usually you know they say some actors work from inside out i think i work from outside in so i start with all the outside stuff 
but I know a lot of actors that don't, they're very quiet and they do this. I'm sort of out and I go in if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, because when I was younger, I always loved cartoons and I used to love drawing. And when I was in acting school, I always drew a picture of the characters I played. And I think it was a mental way for me to look and know that it wasn't me. And how can I make that picture? How could I be like the picture? Um, um, uh, that's great. I heard you wanted to be a cartoonist. Um, they put that up on, on IMDb or one of those. It's not really true. I just loved comic strips. I love drawing. My younger brother's a really great artist. He's a teacher. He's a really great artist. So we always love to draw. He's much better than I. I didn't really get better. I, I was always okay. But I think I incorporated it into my acting somehow. Okay. Um... Uh, is there a character you've played that is your favorite? Um, sometimes I think of the, the, what was my favorite doing the movie. Maybe it wasn't the movie, I, maybe it's not my favorite movie I did, but what, when, when did I have the best time working on the movie? Um, and you know, in Van Helsing, I played Igor and I had all this makeup on, which was sort of hard. I don't really like that much makeup, but it was fun sort of coming up with how I would talk and how I would walk and my hunch and, you know, hunchback and all that. So that was fun. I love doing all that character stuff. Um, yeah. And then I did a show for Hulu called Catch-22 with George Clooney. And I played Colonel Corn, and I'm real mean. A really mean sort of um you know I, I kissed the butt of the the guy i work for the um um, um colonel cathcart I, I work for him so i'm always sort of so i like that character because he wore little round glasses and he was um very clean shaved and squinty eyed and mean and that was a good character that was fun Interesting. Um, I think I like little parts of a lot of the characters, as opposed to maybe just one character. Yeah. And then there's other things I don't like doing, or I don't feel I didn't feel comfortable, or think it was really right for me. Yeah. Um. And um. Uh, which character has been your um your most challenging to play? And how did you uh, prefer, prepare good... for that role? That's a good question. Sometimes there's been a couple of times where I didn't feel right in the role or, or maybe the way the movie was going and the director, I didn't feel right. So that's a challenge, but it's not a good one. But um, there's things like There Will Be Blood that was very hard to do because it was very intense. And um, I was with such great people Paul Anderson, the director, and Daniel Day-Lewis, who ended up winning the Oscar for that movie. One of his three Oscars. So I was very intimidated, but that was a real challenge. That was, And I had to learn how to ride a horse. I rode a camel a little bit in The Mummy, but I had to learn how to ride a horse. Yeah. So those things were hard, but they, they were fun eventually. Um... Very cool. Um, uh, are there are there any roles or characters you haven't played that you really like to do? Um, I always tell people this, and I told this some other guy, and he thought I was. He didn't understand it. I always wanted to play a ventriloquist because when I was younger, I saw this movie called Magic with Anthony Hopkins. And he was a ventriloquist with this dummy called Fats. And Fats was, the whole movie was, you never knew if the dummy was really alive. You know, it was like a horror movie a little bit, or if it was just in his mind. So I always liked that idea that, uh, 
the dummy and stuff and playing the ventriloquist with it. So that's something. And I, and I, um, and I guess, um, to be honest, I, I would like to, I think I would be good at playing a, um, someone like an, a cartoonist, you know, or, or a, or a artist painter or something. That's very cool. It sounds a little challenging, <laughs> but, um, yeah. Um, uh, have you ever, now, there was another challenging thing. I wanted to tell you, I did a movie called widows with Viola Davis. And I had to learn, I, I don't have a big part in the movie, but I learned to sit in a wheelchair and move the wheelchair because he was in a wheelchair. And that was really interesting. And I spent a couple weeks before I took the wheelchair to the basketball court at the, at the recreational center. And I just, even though I don't move a lot in the wheelchair in the movie, it really helped me get into the role to learn to sit in it for weeks. That sounds really cool. And the way my leg is naturally moving my leg, adjusting, adjusting my legs the way somebody does when they're in a wheelchair. And that was interesting to me. It does sound uh, interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, have you turned down a role you wish you hadn't? I'm not at the stage where I can turn down a whole lot, but there's been a couple of things I usually, you know, I have to audition still because I'm not, I'm not a star or anything. I'm just an actor, kind of a character actor. They, they would call me a character actor. So I do different characters. So I don't think there's been anything that I, there's been stuff that I've read and that I was going to audition, but I didn't like the script or didn't feel comfortable with what I had to do or, you know, and, uh, then the movie came out, it would be really great. And uh, I felt like, oh, I should have auditioned for that. But you never know. Um, and uh, what did, what advice would you give um, uh, someone like me on becoming um, a future actor? Um, well, I went to school for four years for it. And what that helped me do is do it all the time. Is the problem with acting is actors love to sit around and talk, but that doesn't really do anything. You have to get up and do it. And it's really embarrassing sometimes and you have to fall on your face. And But I think doing it, doing it, doing it, and then seeing if you really like it. Do I really like doing this? Because it's not easy all the time and it's, embarrassing sometimes and it's but you have to do it a lot and and part of that is just to get over the nervousness of it all and then to start watching i i always watched old movies and i loved old movies so i always watch those so that's all the time i still watch old movies all the i'm talking about black and white movies old movies because i love the actors in those and um, those sort of inspire me. So I think you have to really do it e either if it's community theater or a group of like improv people. Um, there's a book that this woman, Viola Spolin wrote. It's about theater games. I had a really good teacher and he, he, he said everything had to be sort of fun. Everything should be a game because people like games and so it shouldn't be overly serious. And you should be able to feel free enough to kind of let your mind think and do what you're and not feel constricted. So I think just doing it a lot and having fun at it at first is a really good way. Whatever it is, an improv group, community theater, at school, just to really do it, even if the little part. When I would get a part of three lines, I was so ecstatic that I had three lines to say. I didn't want the lead role. I never wanted the lead role. Even now I don't want the lead role. I like being a supporting actor. And I think if you get a little role and do a lot with it, people notice that. They go, you know who I really liked was the sister 
of the blah 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 or the the uncle the weird uncle he was really good so you can make a lot out of a small park that's, that's interesting thank you and um i have one more question for you um are sure. there any are there any upcoming movies or projects you're working on um that we can look forward to seeing a uh, in? Yes, it's called COVID-19. No, I haven't done anything because of the pandemic. The last thing I did was, I think, was um, Wish Upon a Unicorn, that kids film that's on Netflix. And I think that's the last thing I did before the pandemic. Yeah, I love that In one. In fact, that wasn't even supposed to be on Netflix until now, but they got it out earlier. Yeah. Yeah, that and that was, was really fun good. because that was a fun role because I got to play the old guy and then the mean guy. Yeah, um, so I really he talk like this one. when he go. What? Yo, you saw that one. You yeah. saw that one? Yeah. Oh yeah, it was it was cute. Yeah, I loved that one. <laughs> yeah, it was fun because I got to be the old man and then I got to be young, uh, younger but mean. Yeah, it was really funny. I and then I got to eat, uh, then I got to lick unicorn poop. <laughs> Doesn't get better than that. I told I, the director, I, I don't want to do that. I think Amelia actually became a fan at that movie. Right, Amelia? You became a fan, There's right? a scene where I go into the stall and I, I pick up the rainbow colored <laughs> unicorn poop. And I said, do I really have to touch this? <laughs> And the director said, yeah, it'll be funny. I said, okay. But it was fun. That was fun doing that. Yeah, it was really And the makeup funny. people were great. But I didn't want to wear a wig and he made me wear a wig. Yeah. Yeah, I really liked you in that one. Yeah, really I had to wear a wig because my, my, remember my hair was kind of falling out when I was getting old again. So that's why I had to wear the wig. Yeah. Um, but the real unicorn, the real little horse was really cute. Oh my God. Because yeah. part of it was a robot and then part of it was a, a, a real pony. Really? And it was really cute. Yeah, oh yeah, it didn't, after it would work about two hours, that was it, it wanted to go home. It didn't want to be there because it had the little horn on its head and they would put sugar to stick the sugar on because they have to be very careful with animals. And after a while, he would try to get the horn off his head. He wanted to go home. That was it. Two hours. That's funny. Check I out. did not know that. That's really interesting. Yeah. He wanted to go home, go to sleep, watch HBO, whatever. <laughs> okay. And um, that's all the questions I have for you. Um, uh, thank Those you were good questions, Amelia. You did a good job. Thank you for agreeing. You did a good job. This for me.